Hey guys, before we hop into today's video, don't forget that you can find me live on Twitch if you're seeking some tips and advice live. Also, feel free to add me on Twitter. Enjoy the video. Hey, what's up guys? Monster Deface here, back with another Fortnite Battle Royale video. In today's video, we'll be jumping straight into Dusty Divot. But more importantly, there's gonna be one crazy video. We're gonna start off in some really weird situations, but situations all of you guys can relate to. I'm talking landing, getting a couple kills, and finding yourself on no HP. How do you play it? So this video here is, of course, going to be a video based around playing aggressive, but more tailored to the player that wants to play strategic in his aggression. And by that, I mean making the right moves at the right times, still fighting, but playing it safe. I'm talking capitalizing on different situations in Fortnite. So let's just go ahead and get into the landing. Noticing that two people are landing on that same weapon there. I want to go ahead and obviously try and prioritize a different one because I'm not in a situation to target them. Having a player land right on top of me, I scramble for the kill. After being shot by the other player, I do, of course, want to retreat while I can and then turn back on the gas pedal. Chasing that player down, he runs behind the structure. So there is no reason for me to go ahead and follow him and get killed. With this many players in the area, you have to play very smart. You have to pick your fights wisely. Popping this guy once here, he goes down. You can see that playing in the Dusty Divot is like the new Tilted Towers, except it's way less loot. So it's actually not as beneficial landing here as it would be in other areas. But there is still plenty of action to go around. So taking a quick breather here, I want to go ahead and line up my inventory, make sure everything is good. My guns are reloaded. Now at 35 HP, it's pretty much time for me to get on out of here. If I can't pick up a kill and score myself some bandages or something like that, I really do have to get out of here because if one other player rotates from Retail Row, Salty Springs, or maybe even Tilted Towers direction, I am going to be toast. It only takes one player to land a headshot on me and I'm done. Trying to use this first shot accuracy here, you can see that I'm trying to pick off players, but unfortunately for me, I do not get a kill on that guy. The SMG doesn't do a lot of damage from afar, especially at this common rarity. So instead, I farm up one brick wall here, and that is only because I need at least a structure to build in case I get shot at or something along those lines, and then I go for the exit. Now, as I'm exiting here, I get shot in the back, and that one wall that I farmed up comes in super clutch. So notice here how I am playing this wall. I'm literally playing this wall just to buy myself an opportunity to go ahead and make this exit. I'm stuck. But the fight is not over. Even at 15 HP, you can make big plays and you're gonna see how I'm gonna go ahead and do that very shortly. So let's go ahead and do a resource management check here. My wood, eh, not too much. My guns, even worse. I'm literally only rocking scraps here with a deagle with three shots, an SMG with seven, a pistol that's not fully reloaded and an AR that's down to his last couple shots. Every single bullet matters here. So hearing some more shots in the distance, I need to go ahead and referee this fight. This is exactly what I mean by being strategic and being aggressive. Having the high ground here, I can literally ping in and referee fights all day long. I don't have to fully engage and put myself at risk. Literally just moving outside of the ditch here puts me in a position to where I can go ahead and jump into any fight that I want without putting myself at risk. So let's go ahead and move over to the left hand side, the blind side, and then pop him in the chest. I ain't nervous. I ain't nervous, man. What the? Once I reposition, you notice that the player did not know what to do. And just like that, we bounce back in this Fortnite Battle Royale game. I suddenly find myself with a full and max out inventory. The only thing that has not changed in this situation is the fact that my AR ammo is very, very low. Lining up my inventory so that it is comfortable for me, I want to go ahead and find my next fight. I decide to make a rotation straight through Salty Springs because there is always multiple players in Salty Springs. The reason I want to move to a hotspot at this situation is because I want to get into shotgun fights. I don't really want to be in a 1v1. I want to dive into a fight that is already breaking out and getting crazy. I literally want to go ahead and sandwich a couple of more players. This is how you bounce back in Fortnite. 
when you find yourself in weird situations to where your resources are really low let's just say you don't have a lot of ar and you only have a shotgun to depend upon you really have to play to your loadouts benefit playing to your loadout strengths are going to help you out tremendously in fortnite so not even having a fully reloaded magazine here i'm just going to go ahead and make this next fight a shotgun battle but of course i'm only going to engage when i have the highest odds possible at beating my opponent that means I need to catch him while he is distracted, maybe while he's weak, maybe while he's trying to heal, or of course, if he just doesn't even see me coming. These are fights that I want to take. That is the kind of action that I'm looking for. Now, just outside of the blue house at Salty Springs, this is the place to be. Pretty much this house right here is one of the newest attractions for action because of the way the maps have been altered and some houses have been altered. This is a new hotspot for fighting. Seeing a player inside that base there, you can notice that I am playing very patient stalking my opponent i wait for him to make a move when another player shoots at him from the backside, and then i go ahead with the siege here i do slow down my push though because i want to make sure that his focus is fully on the player in front of him now notice that the ramp that i did there was just to simply elevate me so that we don't meet face to face he reacts and tries to counter build me but it's way too late now taking all of his resources here i am literally back in the game I bounced back from having 15 HP, nearly looking like a game that was going to send me back to the lobby, to now being in a crazy strong position to where I can push other players in and get aggressive again. Starting off as an aggressive player in Fortnite isn't always going to work out. You're at the biggest risk when you're moving and pushing other players because you're exposing yourself to the elements around you. You will also notice that in this game, and just in Fortnite in general, I love using the suppressed pistol. The suppressed pistol is an extremely underrated weapon in Fortnite, and when used properly, you can do some devastating damage with it. Right there, I literally laser beamed this opponent without drawing extra attention in the area. But this fight must have been raging on for some time here, as I'm going to go ahead and pop this extra mini shield here, which I should have done a long time ago, I get shot at by another player. Here's a nifty little trick for players shooting you from below when you are getting tagged up. You do, of course, want to get on a ramp, edit the top wall of your turtle mode, and then peek up from the top. And if you have to, just go ahead and continue that flow of floor and ramp. This should buy you more than enough time to go ahead and elevate yourself and not get shot down. Building floor plus ramp is the perfect defense for players shooting from underneath you, just so you don't get shot down. So when you know you're exposed, don't forget to pop a floorboard under you. Anyways, now moving forwards, it's time to make a finalized loadout. Rocking the semi-tactical shotgun here, coupled with the scar and suppressed pistol, I decided to go with the two heals, and that's because I'm obviously fighting against the storm, and chances are I'm going to take fall damage at some point or another. Being this early in the circle, I'm noticing more and more that if you are still in the early stages of the circle, keeping a med kit is just extremely important. Can't tell you guys how many times that the circle has thrown me across the map and literally have screwed me over because I didn't have big heals to go ahead and save me. So instead of popping this med kit early, I want to go ahead and hold on to it. So, so far, we've covered a couple things in our Fortnite video here. What I want to highlight for the players out there trying to play aggressive is that the more fights you take, the more risk you take. But depending on how you engage on these fights, you can have very fun games loaded with action, just like this one, and still keep yourself in a very good position. Using the suppressed pistol from a distance here, I'm not trying to give up my cover. Once again, you can see that it is working because this player has no idea where he's getting shot from. I'm literally harassing him in this fight. This actually turns out to be a really good player. He picks up immediately where the shots are coming from, and then I get shot from the west side. There was actually a sniper there. So what I want to do, finding myself in the middle here, is immediately disengage. I'm going to go ahead and put that good player in the middle of the fight here. Here's why. I want him to be in the middle, not me. Now doubling back, I want to go ahead and push for the high ground, and this guy understands that. He was actually a really good player. I didn't realize he was already counter pushing me, which was the right thing to do in this situation. Scrambling for a little bit of a build battle here, you can see how things are going to break out. I do, of course, trade a couple shots with him, and this is why I like to run the tactical shotgun now instead of the pump. Yes, it's okay to run the double shotgun, but as of late, I'm finding it way more efficient for me to just run one single shotgun and use it to break down my opponents little by little. You can also notice that in this crazy build battle, the other opponent has already jumped into this fight. So literally, it's a three-man build fight going on right now. I'm obviously trying to armor myself back up and then siege the high ground, but I have this player chasing me through the maze, and I have another player sitting on top of me in a base here. Breaking out into another build battle, you can see he already secures the high ground because he is naturally above me already. Picking up all the loot at the bottom layer here, I want to go ahead and take this opportunity once again to fully tank and bulk up. 
This is going to be one long and extended fight, but this is what happens when you are fighting a good player that already has the high ground, and he's actually playing it very, very smart. He's being extremely passive. Although he can push his way down and try and challenge me down here, he decides not to take the risk. So he's actually also being very strategic with the way he's playing the situation. So my next best move is, of course, to be patient and try and seize the opportunity to go ahead and double ramp rush up to the top. You'll notice that I start mini pushes, break off to the side, and then I do it all over again. I'm slowly but surely pushing my way up, trying to find little cracks in his defense and small opportunities to gain more and more elevation over this player. Finding the opportunity here, he allows me to get all the way up in his face. And now I'm just one layer below him. The storm is cooking and it's getting closer and closer. So this fight has to end soon or we're going to be in a really bad situation. He doesn't want to give up the high ground. Putting a campfire down here to go ahead and cap my life off. Since I know the storm's about to hit us and I'm going to make this aggressive push, I go for another double ramp rush play. I'm trying to get above this guy so that I can break him down, but he just keeps on anticipating my counter pushes. Now that we land ourselves in a storm here, risk of fighting is doubled. So I don't want to overpeak my opponent at all. Lucky for me, I have multiple campfires. If you sit on a campfire while you're in a storm, if it's doing only one tick at a time, you'll actually outheal the storm. Once it starts doing two tick at a time, you'll just hit a standpoint with the storm. The storm won't be able to kill you, but you won't be able to heal. That'll still give you an opportunity to pop things like med kits, though, which is still extremely beneficial in these kinds of situations. So now that I have this player above me, I pretty much don't know where he went. He's either above me, healing in a similar fashion as I am, or he's already disengaged and he's chilling at a fort at the edge of the base. That's exactly what he's doing. Peeking off in the distance here, I see a huge fort built just outside of Dusty Depot. So I know he's trying to wait me out. So I decided to go ahead and abuse the campfire here. Noticing that he hasn't fired at me, I'm just chilling by myself some time so that he can think that I'm pretty much no longer a threat. After being in the storm long enough, it's time for me to get on out of here. Having three med kits, I am not worried at all in this situation. What I want to do here, instead of running straight out of the zone and getting pinched at the Dusty, I pretty much want to go wide and exit just around the outside of Dusty Depot. I do, of course, want to heal at the proper time. If you're in the storm, you have a med kit. You need at least 20 seconds to pop this full med kit. So stopping right at the 22 HP barrier. It's going to look like a close one, but this med kit is going to go ahead and activate. Okay. We're going to med kit, take the moon rocks, dip. Now I want to use the moon rock to go ahead and get out of here because the moonstones allow you to move way faster. Now finding myself just outside the circle, I have made it. This has already been a very crazy game. Starting the game off with no HP and then finding myself in a crazy build battle against two other players. I couldn't believe that I was still alive here, but I was definitely playing really sweaty. I wasn't planning on dying just yet. You may have already noticed, but the Porter Fort was set up on top of the Dusty Depot. Had I exited right from the closest side of the storm, that player would have been sitting right above me, expecting my exit. But since I came out from the backside, I ended up slipping right under his radar. Now I'm in the circle and I want to pretty much fort up and just chill until I have to push my next engagement. There's another base to the northeast, and I'm pretty much hoping that I can set up before the northeast player engages on me. Building a nice strong base here, I'm chilling in the circle right now, waiting out this storm wave. I'm going to throw a couple ramps here to go ahead and block that player from being able to snipe me. And then I'm going to focus all of my attention back on that Dusty Depot player that I know is lurking in that area. Where'd that guy go, man? I know he's still alive, dude. I was checking the kill feed. I don't think I saw him die. At this point, I pretty much have a personal vendetta against the player at the oh, Dusty did. Depot. I'm sure he's thinking in the back of his mind, where in the world did this guy go? Sure. Knowing that he's a good player, I truly do want to harass him. And this is where that suppressed pistol is going to come in handy for doing just that. Using a suppressed pistol at this distance will not alarm any other players of my positioning because they can't see the tracers and they can barely hear the shot. I'm actually going to land a couple of headshots and body shots in this next skirmish that I'm engaging on with this player. He ends up wielding a sniper, but I never give him the opportunity to snipe me. I simply continue to harass him and ping off his armor little by little, hitting him with crouch peaks. Even though they nerfed the crouch peak, I mean, sometimes your shots will still be very accurate. Occasionally peeking up and full spam in his body, I slowly start landing shots on him. Don't forget that for every other shot we land, that's just about a mini shield. For every three shots we land, that's a full armor pot. So it's a lot of damage that I'm inputting on this player here, little by little. This is the difference that can make or break you in an end game. Having that armor, not having that armor. Knowing that this player is a good player, I don't want to give him the opportunity to recover. 
in this Fortnite game. And that's pretty much what he gets for picking on me when I was at my weakest in that last fight. Uh oh, that was a lag spike right there. He could have sniped my face off, dude. So now it's time to get on out of this base and move on to better positioning because the next circle just revealed itself. Unfortunately, upon jumping out of my base, I take a little bit of fall damage, so I'm forced into popping this med kit here. I did try and catch myself, but you'll notice that one of my planks built on the wrong side of the base here, but it's all good. Now after popping this med kit here, I want to exit and get just under this base, but the player ends up shooting at me. Going for the quick build here, I just want to reduce my chance to get in shot. Now this is going to be something very interesting. Notice how that player blocks his backside. That shows me that he has the full intention of taking this fight against me. But little does he know, as soon as he turned around, I actually went with a counter push here. So you can see that his focus is still on shooting up my previous base. After he breaks the wall there, though, he realizes that I'm no longer there. Turtling quickly under his base because he tries to counter push me, he makes a grave mistake. He jumps out of his base, allowing me to pretty much prepare for a quick edit to drop him. Finding him on my ramp here, he thought he was going to pressure me face to face, and that was his biggest mistake. I was a little too quick for him, and I catch him with three clean shots from the tactical shotgun, putting him right down. Had I been using a pump in that situation, it pretty much would have been a wasted slot because after you make an edit play, the pump takes way too long to pull out. There's just too much risk in running pump shotgun right now in the game. There's just too much risk, in my opinion, in running the pump shotgun at the moment. And that's why I've been slowly reverting myself to the tactical shotgun. What you want to do when you find yourself inside an enemy base is two things. You do, of course, want to first and foremost begin to start replacing the walls inside of the base. After picking up that kill there, my first priority was, of course, to heal myself, but my second priority was to replace a couple planks just in case I was stuck in that base. Making a big move on the player that's fighting at this other base here that shot at me before, I have a grenade launcher now. With a grenade launcher, I can pretty much engage on any player in this final circle and have very high odds at success in battle. When these final circles come up and you have a grenade launcher, you are pretty much one of the most dangerous players on the field because... Everyone's at medium range. Everyone's at that perfect range for a grenade launcher. This player understands that and he makes a run for it. I dive down into the tree because I know this is a good spot. But as I am fighting this player, I see another player building off in the distance. With that player building off in the distance, it actually ends up distracting my focus here. And that's because if this guy runs straight up and over and catches me in the tree here, I'm pretty much going to get sniped super easily. Now trying to back that player off with the grenade launcher, you'll notice that I'm backing up into the brushes of the trees here, trying to shoot shots at not only the John Wick in front of me, but the guy hugging the bottom of the hill. I jump down and make a full on aggro push. Notice here that I put a wall to go ahead and replace my ramp to turn this base around. Then I drop a campfire followed by a spike trap. Spike traps are extremely important in Fortnite, and that's because if anyone tries to push your bases, like this guy here, they will be putting themselves at risk. That player had full intention of landing inside of my fort. Unfortunately for him, I end up lighting him up before he lands on me, but these spike traps were there to save the day either way. Now we're in a top three situation. This game is pretty much mine. I have nothing to worry about. I kind of know where the last two players are. There's that one player that was hugging the storm line over here. And then, of course, the other player has to be on the south side because no one else is engaged from this angle. So I'm assuming that this player has already counter rotated on me. And that's exactly where he is. Once you get to the point to where you can start tracking players just based off of game sense, you're going to start winning way more games. It's almost like cheating. You kind of get an exact picture in your mind of where these players are. I'm assuming this player is on the north side, but since I blew up the shack and no one's there, I'm definitely thinking, oh man, this guy's got to be on the east side. And as I am fighting, I catch a quick glimpse of him. Now I know this player is going to go ahead and take my kill, and that's exactly what he does. Here in this final fight, I'm going to make another very smart decision. Although I got this guy against the ropes, he has natural high ground, but notice how I hit a small rotation to the right of the tree. This is to play off my dominant camera angle and to put his back against the storm while keeping myself safe. The player gets laser beam and my aggression pays off. Hitting him with the orange justice stance, I was really happy with the way this thing's turned out. This has been another Fortnite how to win video where I walk you guys through an entire game in Fortnite. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. You can see the excitement on my face. This is a really hype one for me.
I went from a full aggro spawn in to having my back against the wall and nearly losing my life and being sent back to the lobby. But playing smart, I was able to bounce back and playing even smarter, I was able to fight my way out of the storm and then take on each player with precision, making the right decisions on when to push, when to harass, and when to go in for the kill. Hope you guys learned a little something from this how to win video from jumping into my minds and how I felt in this Fortnite game. Don't forget to like, comment, and of course, subscribe if you enjoy. I know this is some of you guys' favorite series, so big shout out to you guys that make it to the end. Don't forget to catch me on Twitch and catch me on Twitter, guys. Peace.